All aboard for the transcribed premiere production, The Cruise of the Paul Parrot, that thrilling story of whaling days and buried treasure. Old Ezekiel Kipp, the man who years ago had sold his rights to the treasure to Ezra Grange and was believed dead, has shown up very much alive. And with his new companion, Red Mulhooly, have seized the old one-legged sailor Dickon, promising to do him harm if Ezra Grange and Captain Dalton and his crew do not leave the island at once. As soon as he received the threatening note, Captain Dalton tells Mr. Grange and little Sue Grange and Johnny Robbins, who are quartered in his cabin ashore, that he will immediately collect all his men and set out to find Dickon. But at this time, the rumbling of the volcano on the island grows louder and louder, and an eruption seems ready to occur any moment. As fire starts streaming from the crater, it is obviously necessary for everyone to get off the island at once. And yet, Dickon must be found. It is now the middle of the night, and the beach is a scene of much activity as the men make ready to return to the ship. Captain Dalton hurries to and fro, barking orders, and over the whole scene, the scarlet light of the rumbling volcano falls, making a weird picture. Lively there, men. Loose the painter on that other whale boat. Mr. Buscara, Mr. Grange, and the two young ones will go back to the ship in your boat. Step lively, my hearties. Until we get aboard the Paul Parrot, we'll have to weigh anchor and stand out to sea a bit. There's no telling how far that burning ash may fall when old Smokey Mouth gets started. Even who there may... Johnny, isn't that the scariest sight you ever saw? Everything looks like it's on fire with that red light all around. Oh, it's not so scary. Don't those awful rumblings even scare you, Johnny? The whole island feels like it's shaking. Well, it is sort of creepy. But, Sue, I don't want to leave the island. You don't? Why not? I'm afraid something may happen to Dickon. Gee, I wish I could find him. But we'll be back after old Smokey Mouth is quieted, Johnny. Yes, but, Sue, you can't tell how much lava and fire and ash will come out of the volcano. Dickon might get hurt. Yes, you're right. Look, there goes the first boatload of men back to the ship. We'll have to go too any minute now. Sue, do you think maybe, while they're not looking, we might creep away into the trees over there and try to find Dickon? In all the excitement, they may not miss us. They would too, Mrs. Johnny. You know that. Listen. My brother and Captain Dalton are arguing about something. Now, look here, Captain Dalton. We can't leave you here on this island. Mr. Grange, I want to stay ashore until the last possible moment. But I want to make sure every hand is aboard first. If I can find Dickon in those last few seconds before the lava starts coming down the mountainside, it may mean saving his life. But, Captain, you're risking your own life. We can't lose the most valuable man aboard the ship. Mr. Grange, I owe my life to Dickon. He once knocked the gun out of that swab of Hesty's hand just as he was about to shoot me. And by the North Star, until my last breath, I'll try to save him. Very well. I see there's no use to argue with you, but be careful, Captain. And come back as soon as that ash starts to fall. Aye, aye, sir. As soon as the going gets heavy, I'll put about and come aboard. This little dory here's all I need. I can handle her by myself back to the ship. Well, good luck, Captain. And may you find the black-hearted swab that's holding Dickon and pay him off for good and all. Aye, sir, that I shall. And... Uh, oh, Beth! Throw me down! There's the spare whale boat from the Plowed Parrot coming ashore with one man in it. All right, Captain, it's uh, First Mate Wainwright. Lash me to a yardarm. He's supposed to be in charge of the ship. Ahoy, Wainwright! What's in the wind? Ahoy, Captain. Where do I beat you? Well, to port, mate, to port, to port. Port your hell, make for that smooth stretch. Aye, aye, mate, that does it, that does it. Ah, Captain, I saw all hands on beach here, and old smoky mouth spitting fire. I guess you were planning to stand off from shore till the volcano is quieted down. I lowered the spare boat ready to come ashore if needed. And when Nicholson's boat made the ship and he told me what happened to Dickon, I had to come. I've asked George, there's no need to two and a stay in ashore. Let's not risk more lives than we must. You go back with some of the men in your boat. It'll lighten the load in the other boats. Roy, mate, are you figured on staying here? I've got to hunt for Dickon. I won't leave till the last second. You may later that. There's no telling what may happen to old Dickon when Smoky Mouth really breaks loose. So help me, Roy, if you stay ashore, I will too. It'll need both of us to row your dory back. Mr. Wainwright, are you forgetting I'm your captain? Blow me down, you'll take orders from me. Roy, are you forgetting I'm your friend? We've got to weather the blow together, mate. Well, I... Well, oh, vast, you grizzled old walrus, I guess you're right. We're mates, fair weather and foul. Good, Roy. Two sets of keen eyes searching for Dick and will be better with one. Johnny, Mr. Wainwright's going to stay ashore with Captain Dalton. Let us stay, too. Let's do, Sue. Nobody's looking right now. Let's run for the trees. All right, let's go. All hands put to sea. Make for the ship. All right, Captain. Mr. Wainwright, stay with me, Mr. Grange. We'll join you when we find Dickon, or when it gets too hot for us here. Very well, your master, Captain. Oh, but wait. Where are Sue and Johnny? But blew me down. They're gone. I haven't been keeping an eye on them. Supper and whitefish. I'll bet they ran back in the woods to hunt for Dickon, too. You know how much they like that old salt. Good Lord. They're in terrible danger. 
I'm staying ashore, too. Hold on, Mr. Grange. There's no sense in putting yourself in danger, too. They've gone the same way we'll be traveling. We'll catch up with them. We'll take them back to the beach. They'll wait in the boat until we come back. Oh, this is a horrible business. This confounded treasure is costing us dearly. Captain, you've got to find them. We will, sir. You may lay to that. Come ahead, George. Come aye, ahead. aye, sir. Now our job's doubled, boy. we got to find the young'uns, too. Aye. I didn't dare show Grange how worried I am, but there's no point in getting him lost, too. Batten down my hatch, Roy. We've got to find Johnny and Sue. We've got to. Aye, right, George, I know it. Let's head for the other side of the island. That's the on- only place our men haven't explored. That's the only place anybody could be hiding, old Dickon. A vast there. Footprints. Little ones. Uh, blow me down, George. We're right on the heels of Johnny and Sue. Hurry, hurry. I can't help wondering what's happening to Dickon right now. I tell you, Kip, I don't like it. I don't want to be caught in a bloody furnace when that blooming volcano starts to rip. Easy, matey. Easy, I say. Old Smoky Mouth has been doing that for many a day since I've been here. His bark is worse than his bite, I tell you. He's never erupted yet, just like showing off a bit. I don't like it. The air's full of sulfur, so you can't even draw your breath. I don't like it. I say leave the old man here and let's us roll out to see till the worst is over. Let me tell you something, you big walrus. The kind of volcano that spits out a lot of fire and smoke usually sends out burning ashes, falling far away from the volcano itself. It seldom rolls molten lava down its slopes. Them's the quieter ones, and them's the most dangerous. The safest place here is close to the foot, right here where I've built my cabin. How can we be safer here in the lee of that fire-breathing monster than out to the sea? You can't tell how far out to see them ashes will fall. Sitting out there in the boat, watching the fireworks, you're just as apt to get a red-hot clinker on your head as not. You better be right, blast you. I tell you, old man, if things start falling on the roof of this shack, uh, I'll flay you alive, you old buzzard. Ah, Red, let's stow this blasted argument. Let's go out and see how the one-legged swab is getting along outside. Ah, he won't be doing nothing, mate. When Red Mulhooly lashes him up, they stays lashed. He won't get them ropes off. No, sir. Ah, uh, see? There he lays, just like we left him. The best, you bill scum. Why, if you get all of these ropes, I'll stay in your size for you with me pig leg, and you can lay to that. Now, now, me hearty, strong talk will get you nowhere. When your mates leave the island, you'll be set free. You'll not be harmed. You blinking albatross. You'll suffer plenty of harm if you don't batten down your hatch. Why, you, 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 you blooming rats, I'll, I'll scuttle your decks for you. Ah, scuttle the ship. Make them walk the planks. Ah, ah. stow that, you crazy pelican. I don't see why we didn't get rid of that parrot. I never did like you squawking. It was no business of ours if he followed along when we reefed in Dickon, was it? Yes, squawking don't bother me none. Ah! Flash the redhead to the arter. Boil him and blubber. Ah, That's ah. enough out of that bird. I'm going to finish him. Where's my gun? In your pocket, you lubber. But I see no use wasting ammunition on a parrot. Red Mulhooly, if you shoot Paul Parrot, you'll never raise your hand to do another act, and you may lay to that. Ah, stud. Here's where you squawk your last squawk, bird. Paul, Paul the bass, look lively. Look lively there. Did you get him? Nah, he's fluttering away. May have winged him, I don't know, but at least he's gone. Why, you, 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 you big lump of blubber. If that bird's been harmed, you'll never stop regretting it. I know a certain one-legged bird that's going to get shot if he don't stop his squawking. Avast! Look, there's somebody coming through the woods. You're right, Kip. What shall we do now? I knew they'd come. That'll be me mates come to fetch me, you swabs. Now you'll pay. Put a gag in Dickens' mouth so he can't call out and drag him in the hut. We can go up a bit the mountain slope and lie and wait. When they come close, they'll see the cabin and come up. And we'll have them covered with our guns. That's just what I was thinking, Kip. I used my kerchief to gag him. Don't you tie that filthy rag around. <laughs> Avast! Whoever it is that's coming, that blasted parrot is guiding them here. I knew I should have shot that bird. <coughs> there. <coughs> He's in the cut. Let's go. Right behind the cabin and up the slope, matey. Blasted, I don't like climbing up this slope. You never know when that volcano's going to rain hot coals down our necks. We're safe, I tell you. You better be right, Kip. You better be right. Here they come. Ahoy! Whoever's in that cabin, come out or we'll shoot. Don't let them see you till you get up close. It's that blooming Captain Dalton himself and made Wainwright blast me. I'd like to put a shot into that blooming Captain. I swore I'd get him sometime. You will, you will. Wait till he gets closer. Look, the parrot's flying into the hut. That bird sure likes that one like a sailor. Come out, I say. I'll blow me down. I'll fire. Let me shoot at him, Kip. Wait till I get just a little bit closer, Red. We can't afford to miss. Look out! There's rocks falling down on us. You hit that bloody volcano. I knew you was crazy, you bastard old vulture. I might get killed. I'll show you. Run, Red, run! Avast! Don't hit me. I never thought it would... Uh... I've got to save me skin while I run. Avast! Avast, look up the hill. There goes that lover, Red. Stop or I'll shoot! Get him. 
can't see. The air's so full of smoke and sulfur from old Smoky Mouth. Paul Paris calling from the hut. Maybe Dickens in there. You're right, Roy. Come here. Aye, aye, George. Look. There he is on the floor, trussed up. I'll loosen the gag in his mouth. Oh, blow me down. He's got as much rope wound around him as a full rigged ship. I knew you wouldn't fail me, Captain. You have Paul Parrott to thank for us finding you, Dickon. He led us right through the woods to the hut. Batten down me, Hatch. Look there in the doorway. Hello, Captain. Dickon. Gee, I'm glad we found you. Johnny and Sue. Oh, you had no right to leave the beach when you were to go aboard. Mr. Grange is worried sick over you. And so are we all. But we helped you. Those two men might have shot you. We crept up to the side of the mountain when we saw Red and that old man was Dickon down here at the hut. And then when you came out of the woods and they came part way up the hill, they were just ready to shoot at you. Yes, but you see, we were just a bit behind them and we rolled rocks down on them. They were frightened and Red hit the old man and knocked him out. And then ran away when you fired at him. Captain, we're the luckiest lovers on land or sea to have two such brave young souls with us. Aye, aye, Dickon, right you are. It's lucky for us you did run away from the beach. Ah, all together again, my hearties. We anchor for home. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Paul's right. We'd better get on our way back to the harbor. There's no telling what may happen next. Up there, the volcano. She's really starting now. Clouds of hot ashes are falling. Well, there's a cave over there behind the hut. It'll be safer there than in the hut. Make for it. The volcano's loose and we're in for it now. Ah! Ah! The ship's smoldering! Ah! Now our friends are in danger. They're all united again, but old Smoky Mouth is really starting to go into action. Will the cave in the hillside afford them enough protection? What has happened to Red and old Ezekiel Kipp? We must tune in for the next adventure in this exciting cruise of the Paul Parrot. Your Paul Parrot announcer is Dave Ward. <laughs>